Hey everyone, Doug here with B&H. We've got something really cool today aimed at filmmakers and content creators looking for their next cinema camera. This is the Sony FX30. Looks pretty familiar, right? Utilizing the exact same body as Sony's FX3, the FX30 swaps out the full frame sensor for a Super 35 sensor. The result is a camera that contains all of the functionality and ergonomics of the FX3, while lowering the cost of entry for filmmakers looking for a cinema camera that doesn't require full frame glass. Let's dive right in. At the heart of the FX30 is, of course, a brand new Super 35 sensor on the same Sony E-mount as usual, so of course, you can share lenses between the two cameras and add it in as part of your camera kit. But looking at the surface, the sensor is literally the only real difference here. If you've used the FX3, you've effectively used the FX30. The question here that I'm sure many of you will have is, how does it compare in terms of picture quality? First off, let's get the common specs out of the way, just to refresh your minds as to what you're getting here. The FX30 is feature-packed in a way that you'd expect from a true cinema camera. It's not just specs like the 4K 120 native recording that shine here, it's the legendary Sony autofocusing, the build quality in body stabilization, S-Cinetone color profiles, raw HDMI recording, and so, so much more. And don't forget, because the body is identical to the FX3, it means that all the accessories and rigs that are designed for the FX3 will also work flawlessly on the FX30. So we're going to take a closer look at the FX30 in action, and also compare it to the FX3 in a few ways. Hey everyone, so welcome to our eclectic shooting space for today. As you can see, it's colorful but dark. It's got that perfect moody atmosphere that I want to capture with the FX30 because, as some of you probably know, the FX3 is kind of a low light monster. Now, you can see right here, the FX30 looks pretty much identical to the FX3. It is identical on the outside. The only differences I can see are the quarter 20 threads on the top are black instead of silver. And of course it says FX30. So extremely minor differences. Otherwise, the only main difference is the Super 35 sensor inside. So what I'm gonna to do today is do a couple of comparisons between the two cameras. Now, of course, the field of view is gonna be different between the two of them. Obviously, one is full frame, one is Super 35. So that's a given, but we're gonna see how it fares in things like dynamic range, low light sensitivity, and overall image quality. My main concern, of course, is sharpness and color, but Really, I think we all wanna know how the low light's gonna work. Now this space, as I was saying, is pretty dim. There are some lights. Well, there's a lot of lights here, but they're, they're all indoor practical lights. So we have this lamp, of course, above me. There's a small lamp over there. And what I'm gonna have our talent do is walk in, play with the stereo, have a seat, and just vibe. So let's take a look here. I have the camera set up for 6400 EI. Now that is pretty high, but keep in mind the FX30 has two base ISOs, 800 and 2500. So of course I'm starting at 2500, which means I'm not boosting it that much above the secondary ISO. Now I have everything else set up here. I'm using the 10 to 20 power zoom still um, at about 16 millimeters. So not the widest that you'll see, but that's because I do want to keep the shot a little tighter. So let's begin. So I've switched over to the 11 millimeter f1.8 lens. The reason I did that is because as you can see, we're super close to the chair here where our subject is going to be sitting. Um, but I did wanna have a little bit of separation if possible. Keep in mind, this is 11 millimeters, so we're not really gonna get crazy separation. Uh, but what that means is that I have to take my exposure down a bit. So right now I'm at 2000 EI, so not quite as grand of a low light test, but that does mean I'm a little bit below the 2500 secondary base ISO. And so that should in theory be able to protect the shadows a bit more since the entire exposure range has been brought down. Action. Okay, you cut.
So we're changing things up a little bit here. This is actually the FX3. The reason we're doing that is because we had to switch lenses to full frame coverage. This is the FE 24 to 70, uh, and we're gonna test it on both cameras. So starting with the FX3, this is full frame. Some of you probably already know how this is gonna turn out. The FX3 is gonna be noticeably wider, but I did wanna show people what that difference really looks like in you know, person. So we're gonna have a really quick um, scene here. Our talent's gonna come in and we're gonna show a wide shot, full 24 millimeters, just to give you an idea. All right, and action. Here's the FX30, so it's already noticeably cropped in more. Let's see how it looks. Action. So for our next test, I wanna look at dynamic range. Now the FX3 has fantastic dynamic range and the FX30 should too, but it is technically a new sensor. So just to be, you know, considerate, I would like to do a direct comparison. We're gonna shoot the same scene twice uh, with both cameras to see how they stack up. Now, what I've done here is, I love this thing over here. This is a completely dimmable, controllable light that is on a fake window. So you can create this fake soft window light. And it's beautiful for this because it matches the color balance of the interior. And for this, I have it just enough where I can keep this at its base 800 EI. So that means it's, it's lower uh, ISO rating. And I've kept it just where the highlights should be in there. And I've also thrown only just enough light behind him right here so that you can see faint, faint shadow details. By the time he steps up to the window, he should be completely just backlit. And the idea there is I wanna see how it wraps around into the shadows and how the camera treats those extreme uh, highlights and shadows at the same time. So, all right, remember we're capturing S-Log3 by the way, so we have a little bit of flexibility in the grade. All right, let's go. And action. Now it's time for the FX3. I've set it up to the best of my ability to match the FX30 shot. This one's a little more dynamic than the other field of view test where we had it controlled. So forgive the slight framing differences. All the other settings are the same. So for our last look of the day, this is the FX30 with an FX3 design rig. This is from small rig, of course. Uh, wraps around the bottom, on the side, you have a safety mechanism for your cabling and even some additional uh, mounts for the handle grip. So I've actually put our mic pack over here so what you're hearing is being recorded to this camera right now and it mounts perfectly on the back of the rig. So just to show you that it's literally the exact same body as the FX3. Every single hole, mounting point, uh, everything down to the millimeter. So everything works. Let's talk recording specs. So the FX30 shares the body and menu system of the FX3, but with a smaller sensor, does it have the same recording abilities? Stunningly, the answer is yes. 
The Super 35 sensor here still produces a gorgeous 4K capture, still oversampling the image internally, producing a smooth, crisp image with low noise. But what about frame rates, codec, and bit depth? You get the same 4K 120p native frame rates here, along with 120 in SNQ mode, just as you do with the FX3. The highest tier XAVC HS 4K recording mode, which is an HEVC codec technically, is available up to 280 megabits per second with 10-bit 422 recording, even in 120 FPS. So you have ample room for high quality capture. You also get the intro recording modes with support for 600 megabits per second in 10-bit 422 up to 60 FPS. And no surprise here, but of course, Sony has included the multiple log shooting modes here that have been seen on the most recent FX3 firmwares, which brings it Cine EI, Cine EI Quick, and flexible ISO modes. This means you get full S-Log3 support for maximum gradeability, but rest assured, if you want to shoot outside of log modes, Sony's excellent S-Cinetone color profile is on board here as well. Now, when it comes to the body, there really isn't much to say if you've used the FX3, but for those unfamiliar with it, let's go over the basics. The FX30 has a sleek metal finish with the same aesthetic appearance of their other cameras, the FX6 and FX9, though it's about the size of a mirrorless still camera with dimensions of 9.6 by 9.1 by 5.8 inches. It's lightweight, but given the solid build quality, it does come in at 1.72 kilograms. The button layout is geared less towards still photos and much more towards cinema production, with menu access and exposure controls laid out for easy thumb access on the right side. The AF joystick, record button, and zoom rocker on top are clear indicators of this. On top, you'll notice also three quarter 20 threads intended for accessories, the camera's multi-interface shoe, and like the FX3, no EVF. The LCD, speaking of which, is the exact same one from the FX3 with a crisp 3-inch 1.44 million dot touchscreen that's fully articulated. On the left side, you'll find the connections. A full-size HDMI 2.0 connector, 3.5 millimeter mic and headphone jacks, USB-C for power and data transfer, and a micro USB connector for additional accessories. Lastly, the FX30 has the same combo SDXC slash CF Express Type A slots as the FX3, which remains one of the more robust recording setups on a camera, I gotta say. And it utilizes the same batteries too, the FZ100 on the bottom. So that is it for our time with the Sony FX30. I had fun comparing it to its bigger brother, the FX3, and it performed exactly as I expected, which is to say flawlessly and basically exactly the same as the FX3. It's, it's literally the same camera with a smaller sensor. So that means you get the same ergonomics, the same menu systems, the same recording options, which is huge. Now, one upside to the smaller sensor is that you do get the ability to have smaller lenses. You can use these APS-C style lenses. You don't need full frame lenses. For the most part today, when we were comparing it to the FX3, we did use full frame glass because we had to. But you can get away with lenses like this, uh, and especially if they have the power zoom function, that makes this an incredibly compact cinema option. So I think those who wanna get into the Sony Cinema system without going the full frame glass route will be perfectly at home with the FX30. So how will you use the Sony FX30 in your videos? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Anyway, I'm Doug with B&H and I'll see you next time.